G'day peeps, Ronnie Vale, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to another episode of Modified. And we have a GU Patrol and Nick from Sidetrack. Hi mate. How are you dude? Good, good, very good. So Nick, what have we got mate? Uh, what's the setup for? And the year as well, make and model? Bit of a mix between some decent four wheel driving and obviously we've got to drive a lot of Ks to get anywhere in this country, so. Yeah, cause you're in the middle. We're in Adelaide by the way, at Whistler Wines. Yeah, in the Barossa Valley. Um, yeah, it's probably, a, well, I think it's a pretty happy medium of what Tura and a pretty decent so it's like a hybrid, you'd say? Yeah, yeah, to a degree. 4.2 GU Patrol 2002, nothing too crazy, but yeah. It's a, Has that got the automatic or manual? That's manual. Manual? Yep. Okay, nice. We'll dissect this thing as we always do, piece by piece. And I think this might be, um, you might want to go grab a couple of beers or a coffee or a tea. Because it's going to take a while, I think. Grab a couple of beers. <laughs> We'll start with the bar work, mate. And there is a story coming up in lights and comms about these lights, why they're not here. Stay tuned for that. But let's have a bit of a look, mate. So what have we got? Just a ARB Deluxe bar, winch bar. It's done the trick multiple times yep. as far as protection goes. You're up pretty high, eh? We'll get to your lift, but it's up pretty high. Like. We're, we're squatting down and it's like right in your face still. Yeah, it's good for an oil change. <laughs> yeah, it would be actually, wouldn't it? <laughs> Ultra hook with your, what winch is in there? That is a Smitty built, 12,000 pound. And it's, I know that's have a, had a bit of use. It's definitely had a lot of use. Videos, yeah. um, it's been, it hasn't let me down as far as like actually getting me out. Uh, wireless has been a bit of an issue on it, but I mean, I can, the worst thing I've got to do is plug the lead in and. So what do you mean by wireless has been an issue? Just the, the proximity or? Uh, it's just, uh, I believe it's an electrical issue with the switch. Okay, um, solenoid. On, on, the, on the winch control box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it hasn't, hasn't let me down and it's pulled a fair bit of weight um, mm. with trailer as well. Bash plate, that's part of the bull bar? Yep, that's, that came with, that's a part of the ARB Deluxe bull bar. Uh, Were you running for recovery points? Uh, just this factory, that factory thing. Oh, the one that's bolted in? Yep. Yeah. That's all I've ever needed so far. Hasn't let me down. Don't really need anything else under there because you're up so high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, mate. So what do you got around the sides? You got two, well, you got side steps. You got a rear bar too, don't you? Side steps and rear bar, yep. All right, we'll move that to the side. Too easy. Is this custom made or is it? They are not, they are, it's a little Adelaide company actually. Um, Advanced. I think it's a bit of a side, side gig for them. Uh, Advanced Headers is the company but I reckon his son may be dabbling in a bit of the four-wheel drive protection gear. Um, they were reasonably cheap and they've saved me heaps of times. Okay. Um, so you put the whole weight of the car on them already then? Big time. The oh, you got skirt, square tubing here, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah they've seen some, some decent rock steps and whatever um, mm. and they've done their job. I mean, I've still got seal panels that are in good, good nick. So <laughs> yeah. the only downside that I've seen to these is you really got to put your side of your foot onto that to get any purchase on it. You don't like really to stand on it. Yeah, it's sort of. It can be a little bit slippery. A bit, bit dodgy when you get in yeah. and out. So I'd like to. I've got plans to refab these myself and put a bit more of a slot step on it. While we're here, let's talk about your wrap. So, th th what color is the car? That underneath? is this matte. Uh, underneath is gloss white, as gloss, a lot of GU, gloss white. as a lot of GUs are. I see why you wrapped it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's transformed the, the truck big time. Um, mm. Yeah, it's. Yeah, there's a bit of a black theme going on here. Pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's not, it's in the process of being black. <laughs> Blackened out. Looks to have held up. I mean, how long have you had it on for? That's been on for two years. Uh, yeah, I reckon 2017 I put it on. Mm. Um, Is all this from coastal tracks? That A lot of these pins, well, yeah, some of them would be from southeast of SA, but a lot of them are from Tassie as well. Ah. We had some really overgrown tracks in Tassie and... Mm. Um, and they were getting long tracks and we just were fed up with it and then you end up just disregarding any respect for your vehicle, basically. <laughs> what would this cost to do on a car and would you recommend it to people? I would recommend it. Uh, I did it for aesthetics to start with, but having done it and had it for a couple of years, it's protected my vehicle big time. Mm. Uh, Cost-wise, I got this reasonably cheap. Still a good quality wrap, like brand-wise. Um, this cost me three, That's which which bad. is 
it's really cheap as far as that's you, pretty cheap yeah as far as a cheaper than punting your car anyway definitely onto the rear bar now is this a custom rear bar that's well it's an arb rear bar by twin wheel carrier well you've changed a bit i have because you angled the wheels yeah correct i sort of went for the trophy trophy truck look um just something different i like to sort of keep it a little bit unique mm. i like it it was a reasonably simple simple task and if you can cut some steel and weld some steel you, you're pretty well on your way to making mm. your own stuff so so what's kind of bar is it that's aib so aib make bars of gu's yep i didn't even know i that thought was, they just used kmart stuff first thing i did when i bought this gu was um went to aib and got all my heavy accessories put on mm. before i did my suspension this is 10 that, years ago there's a good tip for you um and then i was sort of you know you're always going to add extra things but you've got a big heavy steel bar you got a big front bar on it you put on the main weight to start with exactly yeah. and then you can work from there it's a killer the it? lighter you are the better you are as you are well aware yeah yeah we're well aware of that yeah <laughs> yeah and enlightened from it too this looks i was about to say no is this did you make this or i did that's yeah you won't find another one of them around just yet yeah um it was just a bit of a pain in the... Uh, Did you get these, you got this laser cut, obviously. Yep, that's all laser cut. And because you got a wagon, everything moves the same rate, so you're right. Well, no, not it necessarily. Um, so you get movement in this? One is a, one's obviously connected to the body, essentially, with oh, the rack. Oh, this is connected and, to the chassis. And that's connected to the chassis. So, so what, I've... What are you doing about your movement? I've got rubber mounts in between these down here. For that exact reason it oh. was a, it was a huge concern of mine initially yeah. i was going to mount the bottom to the body but it was getting too technical mm. um so i sort of because they ended up tearing your rack sideways didn't it something would fail possibly mm. whether this would crack and and the structural integrity would just be compromised on that or yeah rack or you know something's going to break basically okay. so that explains this connection down here i've had that on there for just over a year and i haven't had any issues nice um, so yeah, no, it seems to be working. So there's swing away arms, obviously. They are. Oh, the whole thing. Nice. What is that? Just. That's just a yeah, single action, fair bit nicer than the big levers that are often used. I like the position of the ax here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> the old number plate. I use the number plate mount. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. You got your air hose here as well? Yep. You got double or single compressor? Yeah, the twin. Good to see a good recovery point in the back. The black theme has continued. You have a black label still on your roof rack. I do. That you, isn't a factory still. Um, it's um, dyed, I guess you could call it. Okay. I made a bit of a broth up on my little camp cooker and boiled my steel, obviously in parts, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a method of changing the color of plastic. How's it going the weather? Haven't had an issue yet. Mm. It's had uh, a complete covering of snow. Um, yeah, no, it's still, still going. Okay. So your Cheney oil, yep. and no, sorry, fuel. Fuel. Premixed. Max tracks, well used max tracks, I can see. Yeah, they're, uh, you really Had smoothed a, them off at the yeah, top there. <laughs> disregard the don't spin your wheels on them. Yeah. If you're bogged, you need to get out, so you'll spin your wheels. Pelican case. That is full of recovery gear. And that's bolted through the bottom. It is, to... yeah. With okay. the front runner rack, you slide mm. a M8 bolt into the channels, and yeah, they're basically sticking up inside oh, the yeah. Pelican case. Put a nylock on, on the inside, and that nice. was a bit of a pain to line up, eh? Uh, not too bad. Just a couple of measurements and okay. sort it out, but yeah so much nicer than having things strapped on yeah. if, if it's not something you need to remove um yeah which i've since it's been on i've never taken it off so plenty of room in this roof rack this yeah the old bonus of a wagon what are these brackets for that's for more max tracks so ah. another, another four max tracks on there that awning looks pretty big that's i read it on the other side it's super big that is and it goes a, three it's a two point, two two point four but it's a 270 270 with, with the forward fold as mm. well and a trusty shovel on the side. Yep. What type of roof rack is that? That is a front runner, a slimline too. Um, yeah, it's a nice rack. 
really changed the look of the, the whole truck, really. It's mm. um, obviously sticking with the black theme too, which is a yeah, bonus. suits it. It does. Still on a roof rack. There's a table up here, you're telling me. Yes. Where is it? Uh, tucked in. Oh, that's once what the latch is for. Once again. Is that part of it? That is, yeah, this, so this is a front runner product again. Um, a stainless camp table. That's pretty clever. Awesome. Just Lockable, um, sturdy as it almost seems a little bit too good to be taken camping. So, so how do you open it? Oh, you push that one Push in. that up. Awesome. How long is it? Without pulling it all away, but. We can pull it out. Oh, yeah. Just decent size, isn't it? Mate, that is a bush poker table. <laughs> I can also, you got a line there, you can even play beer pong with it. <laughs> Doesn't get used for food prep. No, just, just beer pong. <laughs> just beer pong. And poker, <laughs> bush poker. So now it's a good product and sturdy. That's awesome. Is it light? Oh, oh a bit of weight to it. A bit of weight. Won't blow over then, I guess. No, no, it's a, mm. yeah, it's, it's a pretty tidy bit of, a, bit of kit. Very nice. We'll be back after a round of beer pong. <laughs> We're going to call this segment Lacquer Lights and some comps. There's a story behind these two spotties right here that you, you cannot see. What happened? They were IPFs. Um, nothing too flash, really. The halogen ones? Yeah, they were. Mm. Um, they, they didn't offer a great deal of light, but they were still, a, you know. Useful. They're still useful. Mm had a reasonable collision with a kangaroo. Is that a number plate as all? Well? Number plate, ball bar, quarter panel. Oh, which side? That side? <laughs> this side. This has actually been rewrapped. Oh. Um, headlight ruined, indicator ruined. It, yeah, I've had a few uh, cases of hit and ruse, unfortunately, and that one just did a mess, made mm. a mess. Um, Hence why we have bull bars in Australia. Grill was, yeah, it was a basically... Wrecked as all? Yeah, insurance job. Same, same bonnet? Yep, same bonnet. That was unscathed. Okay. But the same bar as all? It is the same bar at this point. Um, looking at options with that. It's yeah. not a great deal of options with GUs because they're not a, they don't make GUs anymore and, mm. yeah. Well, it says a lot, a lot about the bar itself and the reason for having a bull bar. You can see it's shifting in a little bit on that side as it gaps yeah, a Yeah, there's smaller. a bit of a mm. few discrepancies there. Must have been a big one, eh? It was. It was a solid, solid hit. Mm. It was early in the morning and it wasn't much time to slow down. It was no, it never is. It was a good hit. Light bar on the roof, what is that? That is a LED light co. Once again, it's nothing it's a probably a mid range sort of a bar. Um, offers a, a good deal of light. So um, yeah, as far as the cost more to, spread though. Yeah. Not much different. Distance. Not a huge amount of difference, no. Different yeah. distance, no. Um, You've but, got yeah. in the best spot, though, because that would not reflect off your bonnet, would it? No. It would just no. reflect off here. That's about it. It's a good thing with the rack slightly tucked back yeah. off the off the windscreen. Definitely. Because there's nothing worse than having your light bar over your window and it shines in your window. I see so many people with that. You, it's, it's actually dangerous Dash driving clear. with it. Recommendation in between rack and light bar, mm. often get a whistle through there um, at speeds. Uh, a little bit of like a foam strip stuffed in between there, just cancelled it completely, which was good. Nice, cheap oh, cool. addition that uh, uh, drives you insane if you don't have it. Two antennas here. One's a foam booster or, no, AM, FM. AM, FM. AM, FM and GME 6.6. .6. And what radio you got inside? Uh, Model-wise, not sure. We'll look at it when we get in there. It is a GME, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, model-wise, I'm not too sure. Good distance? Yeah, seems to be good. I've only had to use my UHF once for recovery when I'm not, when I was by myself. Mm. Um, and it yeah, performed well. Oh, you, picks, you managed to get someone? Someone picked me up and come and pulled me out of the uh, bog. Ah, I know what you mean, okay. Um, <clears throat> other than that, it's majority of convoy, mm. convoy chatter and banter, I guess. The other half of sidetrack drives the Jeep, so yeah, there'll so be lots of banter. There's mainly one way though. <laughs> <laughs> Any lights on the back? There is a couple small LED light bars uh, used for either reverse or camp setup lights, mm. uh, just tucked under them my dual wheels. Tires and suspension, we'll talk about these Goodyear donuts first. How long you had these for? 
This set, I would say 18 months, maybe a few more than that, but yeah, roughly 18 months. Cool, so we can ask you a lot of questions then. So we've got 351 slash 75 R16, so a 35 inch tire and a 16 inch rim. How do you rate this tire and would you get it again? And how many Ks has this particular one done? Kilometers, I couldn't tell you. Um, it's not something I really monitor. Mm -hmm. I would 100% get them again. We've been running good years, not necessarily this, the MTRs, but we've had Dura tracks in the past. I've had the MTR in the 33, the MTR in the 35. I've had probably between three sets of tires, I reckon I've had one puncture, and that was on the Dura track. They've been a really good, really good tire. Okay. And I would definitely buy them again. Let's just clarify that. Um... I don't have any affiliation with Goodyear. <laughs> and we, yeah, we're running that on another side track vehicle as well, these same tyres and, mm. and yeah, they've been they have been a good tyre. So we have Fox shocks with a remote res. And what is the height of the lift first? It's a four inch lift, uh, Dobbinson Springs, Fox, like you said, remote res, adjustable. Front and rear? Front and rear, actually. And Dobbinson Springs front and rear? Yes, rear isn't, at, isn't currently remote res adjustable, they're just a straight shock. That was due to a failure on our Tassie trip. So I've just got straight Fox shocks in the back. Okay. Um, so what happened? Basically pulled over for a different issue. Um, heard a noise under the vehicle and we stuck a head under the vehicle and there was just uh, the bottom dust cap on the shock had popped off and there was just oil everywhere. Oh, um, yeah. We've ran with no shocks before due mm. to other failures on a different vehicle. The Jeep, it's nothing you can't get by with, but. Yeah, the spring's doing most of the work, but. That's right. Um, take it easy and you no dramas really. But yeah, this is a 10 inch travel in the front and 12 inch travel in the rear. Great flex and great articulation. Mm. It's yeah, really the last suspension upgrade I did with all this gear it sets it apart. It's been really, really good. Steering dampener is a Fox 2.0 custom mounts for them because I don't like them bulky U-bolts. Uh, yeah, got some mounts made up from a mate. Uh, he's Nailed them, they're real nice and real sturdy. Obviously adjustable, pa adjustable pan hard to accommodate for the four inch lift. Drag link is also adjustable um, and beefed up, both of them. So they're a little bit bigger than, and stronger than factory. And your radius arms, are they superior? They are superior hyperflex arms. They obviously contribute to the amazing articulation mm -hmm. and, and yeah, great travel with all of that. I've still, I'm still running factory sway bars, but with the extended links. Under the hood, the bonnet, is very unusual. We've popped the hood, the bonnet, and there's more light under here because it's white. <laughs> yeah, that's where you really <laughs> take notice of the, the wrap. There is a bit of stuff going on here. This 2002 GU, like 4.2 Patrol, this one in particular was in between, it was factory turboed, but it wasn't factory intercooled. It was mm -hmm. a point in time there where they had a, a gap. They didn't just intercool and turbo them at the same time. So this one wasn't intercooled from factory, but it was turboed. So I put, when I got my three inch exhaust and put my well, cross country intercooler on top to get a bit more power out of the old girl, they basically go hand in hand if you want to get some, some reasonably cheap horsepower out of, out of the old 4.2. Two batteries. Yes. Is that the factory position? This is the cranking battery. Original, yep. Yep. And that's, that's your the, deep cycle? Yep. Full river. So two batteries in total? Yes. Yep. Cool. Only running the two. Diff breathers over here? Yeah, that's... That's a neat little stack. Yeah, uh, trans and diff breathers. Mm -hmm. I think there's four options on that. Yeah, you've got a fourth one here. I think there's only three plugged in. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it's trans and front and rear diff breathers. And we've got this fuse box here, which runs your accessories? Yeah, I've got a fuse block on both, one over here and one over there, oh, okay. just to tidy things up a little bit, mm. um, rather than having... A... Ah. And he's labelled them. You don't often see that. So that way, even your mate can diagnose That's the right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, just tidies things up a little bit. Um, it could definitely be a... Electrical wires could be a little bit tidier, but ProVent catch can, yep. They're absolute must. Yeah. yeah. For, for the 4.2. Definitely. How much do you drain out at service intervals? Oh. Varies? 
this isn't my daily, mm. so it's hard probably to, to gauge. Um, I'd probably, after a trip, say if I did Tassie or high country, um, I'd probably, you might get a shot glass out of it. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, but you've also still got the filter in there that is yeah, yeah. is holding a lot itself, so you're only getting the, the mm. residue drain off of the filter. But it's still a, a significant amount that would have gone back through. Exactly, you don't want that pumped through. Anything else in here that we can't see? Um, Anything on your side? Exhaust. Yeah, what, what exhaust is it? That was cross-country. I'm not sure exactly on the company of the exhaust, whether they dealt is it, with is it. Is it a three-inch? It is a three-inch, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Still a factory turbo. That's on the to-do list as well. Hmm. Got some struts. Our factory. They are factory? It's a um, four-wheel drive, not a farm truck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, other than obviously gauge sensors and mm. and whatnot, everything's pretty well still running factory, which has been super reliable. I haven't had any major major breakdowns on any trips, which is good. Probably due for one at some stage. Righto, we're gonna take a look at the back now. So how do you how do you operate this thing? Uh, pull that lever and let it go. Oh, which one? This one. Yep. Nice, that's so cool. And then, just lock awesome. that in. Aha, uh -huh. I know how to G you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Is this custom? That is, that's a reasonably new addition, probably a year ago, I built that. Um, so DIY? Yep. Awesome, I love DIY. Super. It's made camping life a hell of a lot easier. Mm. I can see you've got your solar panel down here. Solar panel down there, a 120-watt red arc. Um, tucked in there. It's obviously something you want to keep reasonably secure and safe. Mm. So it's just got its own own little spot. Nothing else is around it crashing into it. Yeah, because they're not cheap. They're not, <laughs> by any means. And they're super, you know, if you ruin one on a trip. Yeah, it's about time. It is. What's in this? That's just some camp lights. Oh, the strip lights? They're just, yep. Hardcore lighting. Uh, it's an excessively big box for what's in it. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's your cooker? That's cooker. What is it? They're my awning pegs and straps. On top of that, keeping rattles down is awning walls. Mm -hmm. Two walls. Designed for the super peg awning? Yes. Okay. And then just the Coleman. That's a big cooker, man. Cool. So, so it takes a big, two big pans and. Uh, or just a hot plate. That's, that's a, a full hot oh, plate. Oh, yeah, okay. So now it's a. Just a yeah, that is a decent size, eh? Yeah, no, it is. So it's like a, having a barbecue machine. Basically. And cool. yeah, it's a three burner, lucky start. That's the trick. So what do you what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a carpenter by trade. Ah, uh, well that, that makes all the sense. But DIY dab drawers. Dabble in anything really. Yeah. Give, give anything a crack. Yep. Way to be, mate. All right, let's have a look in this drawer. Ah, uh, see what you're doing there. So that protects that from jumping around. Stops rattles as well. Mm. Uh, drawer. Ah, look at that. So that also doubles as a work surface, cooking is that, is or... Is that 3.16? Uh, some sort of grade of stainless. Yeah, food grade. Who knows? <laughs> but it works. It works. Perfect. Um, and yeah, that's just on struts. Oh, you can see ammo cases here. And that's, yeah. Nice and light too, these Walk cases. Packs. And they're interchangeable if you just want to whip one out and you want to take, like, this is... Okay, so that's where you work? Well, this is... Um, that, well, that's what comes with you on trips. Yes. Yep. This is. I'm literally leaving for a trip in four days, so this is pretty well you're, set you're up. Pre-packed because we're going to a show, so yep. you're pre-packed. Awesome. Perfect. So if we've got yeah, between the two side track vehicles, we one packs me, uh, mechanical tools and I pack electrical tools okay. and power tools. Perfect. Um, sort of rather than double packing things. And then here you got first aid for your vehicle and personnel. Yep. And a few other bits and pieces. Fire lighters. Um, yeah, spare fridge fuses and oh, yeah. a few cords and whatnot. 
Um, nice. Yeah, spares for vehicles, spare hubs, filters. That's, that's pretty good because you can just pull this out, put another one in. That, so when you when you if you go on to work on a Monday doing goes, some carpentry, if you, you throw it. your carpentry one in. Uh, this isn't a. Oh, it's not your work. It's not your daily driver. <laughs> right. Not my daily driver. Okay. So. But if it was, you could. You could. What have we got in these ones? Uh, for the trip, they will be the front two will be food. Um, there's two at the front of them as well. One, the bottom one is spares, like spare oils. Um, you know, spare parts and spare like parts and, and fluids and whatever stuff you don't need to get to unless there's something exactly. Wrong. Hence the reason they're not in the best location to get to. And the top one? Top one will be. It's a bit of a. At the moment, it's empty. It's mm. not accounted for. So whether it be. Uh, boots or you know something that you don't really need to get to every day as well okay you got a cargo net as well I guess you put all your pillows and stuff up here pillows depending on the trip jackets anything light mm. it's great it keeps yeah it would be it is a lot of the time you're throwing stuff in the back of your car yeah. and then it falls over stuff and, yeah. yeah and you don't want your pillow getting filthy in between all the other mess and dust mm. so it's just true it's probably a, a space that people don't use speaking of spaces that people don't really use You've made use of that space right there. That is pretty cool. So that's the standard shelf inside yep. the back of the wagon. Yeah, there's one on both sides. Cool. And what's in that box there? That's a deep cycle battery. Um, that, that won't be, that's not generally there. That's just running my fridge okay. at the moment. All right. Um, and then there's down the side of the boxes, there's two amps for the sound system. Yep. Um, cool. One runs the two sets of splits. What's in a bio bag? Uh, that's, oh, no, it's a bow up net, but wasn't the bag. That's a front runner chairs, camp chairs. Okay. So there's two chairs in there. Oh, and I fought the fold up ones. Yeah, expanders. Mm. Um, super compact, which is great. Single ARB swag? Yep. Um, How do you rate the ARB swags? Just done a review on five different swags, and they it polled pretty well, really well. Okay. There you um, go, guys. And I was quite surprised. Mm. ARB had a huge product range, and... I wouldn't have thought that they'd put so much attention into their swag, but no, it's a, it's a nice swag. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Torben loves them too. All right, is that everything in the back here? Uh, a couple of lights. Yeah, what's hidden down the sides there? Like down in the sides panels. In there, I've got, it's a terrible place to get to, so I've just got intercooler hoses. Um, oh, yeah, the things the, that you don't need to get to. The things you probably won't need, you but they're not. there if you need them. That's right. Um, yeah, that side's obviously still accessible. Mm. Um, yeah, basically stuff that I hope I don't want to get to. Yeah. And then tie down rails recessed in, uh, in both sides in the middle. And they just have it. Oh, yeah. Cool. So you can still lower things flat on the on the top. That's why I love DIY. That's so cool. And you got a water container in here. It's one it thing. 20 I'd, litre? That is. It's one thing I don't have at the moment underneath the GU is onboard water. Okay. Um, it's in the, it's happening. Right. It just hasn't happened for this trip. Um, okay. So yeah, carrying jerry cans inside isn't ideal, but it's, it has to happen for this one. No worries, at least it's not petrol. Yeah, that's right. All right. Mate, that is, that's a lot of room, mate. It's the beauty about a wagon. That is a lot of room. And how big, how big is this angle? That's an 80 litre. Um, normally, a 40, my 40 angle sits there. Mm -hmm. And this goes in in the tracker that we built. Um, but doing a month long trip, a 40 litre isn't going to be nowhere near enough room. Oh, wicked. So it's got the extra baskets you can pull out. Yep. That's awesome. Super convenient if you, you know, if you like you would understand if you're. Yeah. Driving through, you can still reach it from your driver's seat if you want to get your snacks out or your whatever you're mm. nibbling on. That's pretty handy. Uh, is that a fan? Yeah, we're heading to Queensland, so fans in for this trip. You're heading to Queensland in November. <laughs> That's all right. We're heading to the Kimberley in November too. Torben's already uh, said a few words to me because <laughs> he just came back from Carafa and it was 40 degrees. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting up there. Fire extinguisher down here, easy to get to. Two, and this, yeah, one on each side. What's this? That's a hammock. I said we're going to Queensland. Oh, right. Got to, got to pack the hammock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I understand that. Yep, so you 
That's cool, the floor. So you've got heaps of room in here. There's Tidy your, ones along it as well again. There's your big subwoofer. Oh, is your projector. That's your battery system, eh? That's a 1,000 watt inverter. Oh, okay. That's for, an inverter. Right. Yep, for 240 power, obviously. A um, mm. bit of a power board next to that. The, all that back section, uh, if I remove, so obviously fridge out and the two false floors, they're in two sections. So I can put my 40 fridge back in mm -hmm. and leave this false floor. I can still put it, make it a three-seater with that half because I've built that in two halves. Yeah. And then I can also remove this half and bank it back to a five-seater and sub, inverter, power board all still stays there and that just folds up next to the back of the seat. Nice. So it's a bit of a modular sort of a setup. Um, awesome. I don't change it back much, but it's literally only four bolts to remove these and eight bolts to put the seats back in. So yeah. it's, it's pretty quick and easy. I'm digging this setup. This is awesome. I think we get to the front now and see what gadget systems you're running in the front. Easy. I can also see a few cameras, so it'll be interesting. Cool, let's have a look. It looks very tidy in here, like very tidy. There's not like stuff going on everywhere, but I can see you have got stuff neatly placed. I've kept the stock standard sort of a look. I don't really, yeah. I like, I like, still like, obviously you want the, you want the features and whatever, but I still like it sitting tidy and neat and everything where it needs to be. Looks really neat in here. So be honest, when you're on a trip and you're getting, you're stopping, you're filming, you're getting in, you got stuff here, you got stuff there. Does this end up being a mess after one, one day? Um, not so much on a boys trip when the missus is involved. There's a lot of stuff in that footwell. Um, <laughs> she's probably going to yeah. kill me for that. But one thing that does my head in is cords. Always charging something. There's always something being charged, whether it's off the inverter or off USBs or mm. that just, you would understand, there's just cords going everywhere. You don't want to be in my car. <laughs> It does my own head in. Yeah. I don't even know where the cords are going. Yeah, it's, you don't even know if you need them. Um, yeah. That's probably the worst of it. Um, yeah, it stays pretty tidy. Oh, things get a bit messy in the in the cargo area, but, you know, that's travelling. We'll begin up here and then work our way down. Navigation, HX1. Yep. How long you have that for? Uh, probably a couple of years. It's, oh, really? Yeah. Damn, you look after your stuff, man. That, that looks brand new. Um. Yeah, it's, it's a good bit of kit, actually. I've had a bit of a play with other people, like a couple of mates and whatever, mm. with earlier model digital maps, and they're just non-responsive, I find. Yeah. I, and I was hesitant to buy one for that reason, and then I um, just thought, stuff it, I'll buy one, bought that, and yeah, things move quickly. You don't zoom yeah. in and wait four minutes for it to get okay. to where it needs to be zoomed in, so I'm happy with it. It's good. Obviously, oh. it doesn't replace paper maps. I think it's a bit hit and miss because I've had a lot of issues of mine. Is that right? Lagging. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it gets to the point, I'll put a lot of points on it. I'll put a lot of stuff I don't really it. use points much at all. Yeah, well, if you track where you're running the whole time and you put heaps of points in, you kind of need to um, erase the cache. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, you'll scroll and it does nothing and then you're going like this. Oh, there you go. And then that's... all of a sudden, whoosh, you're down the other yeah. end and of the And that's what drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, I don't use my, like the waypoints a great deal. I reckon I've put a few campsites in that I've really liked just in case I go back there, but mm. um, may have tracked a couple tracks, but yeah, generally it's just used for the actual, the now pretty much. Okay. And a bit of a, yeah, I prefer, I prefer to navigate by paper maps. By paper maps. Yeah. It's You're solid. safer then. Yeah. Something goes wrong. You know how to do it. Yeah. This is your GoPro mount. This is what you run while you're driving. That's, facing yeah. You. So it's easy swap around. That's dash. That's clever. Back towards you and gets passenger and yeah. and driver. Um, nice. Super easy because serves three purposes. Yeah, and three camera external angle. external mic because GoPro mic. Yeah, they are especially wind noise and whatever. It can be a bit frustrating when you get home and you can't use your footage. Yeah, GoPro mics. Are so you got three gauges over there. What are they? Uh, they're all Red Arc gauges, um, EGTs, and Boost. There's the top one. Um, water temp and oil pressure and outside temperature, ambient temperature outside, my sensor's just underneath my mirror. Okay. And then dual voltage for uh, both batteries. And down here, all your we switches? We've got uh, provisions for rear diff lock, but my front diff lock is, I've got an Eaton 
okay. key locker in the front. Because you're really good LSD in a GU. Yeah, it's, it does a trick for the moment. It is on the, obviously on the car, or I wouldn't have that switch mm -hmm. there. Um, compressor, which is under my seat, uh, the twin ARB compressor. Spotties, well, spotties I don't have anymore. Yeah, the Phantom um, Spotties. It is also <laughs> linked up with high beams with my light bar. Yeah. And rear lights underneath my dual wheel carrier. Okay. And you got a Red Arc Toe Pro up here. Yep, that was, yeah. Use, use the toe? Yeah, still do. Um, still do. Yeah, we've got a uh, trailer we built for, an well, off-road trailer we built. So easy GME radio, and that's got everything in the handset, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was, that's a, I think I've had it for a couple of years as well. After my other one went, it was a, um, not a whole handset, but yeah, mm. went kaput on a Kimberley's trip and had to replace it on the go, so. Big yeah. sun visors in the GU. But yeah, no, but, oh, cruise control, that's not a factory. It is a fact, I've, once again, I don't like things hanging off my dash that aren't sort of standard look. Mm. Um, I did a bit of research and they said that they could link in an aftermarket cruise control into the factory uh, control. Mm -hmm. So I purchased the factory control, bolted it to the steering wheel and they linked it all in with yeah, the cool. aftermarket setup. Does the trick. And you got black duck seat covers which yeah. you're sitting in? Yeah, they've been really good. And that's about it, eh? Pretty much. Cheers, How mate. How is it? Q&A? Yeah, like this, yeah, it's good, mate. It's really good. <laughs> Okie dokie. What year was this vehicle again? 2002. We missed out on uh, extended fuel. Do you have extended fuel? No, factory tanks, which is a 90 standard with a sub of 30. So it's basically a jerry can in your in the sub tank. Okay, and that sub tank is, is factory? Yep. Nice, but it's 30 litres. Yeah, it's yeah, 120 litres, or if squeeze a little bit, bit in, a bit more in, but. Does it pump from that tank to the main yep. tank? All right. Pretty slowly too. It's not a it's not a quick mm. a quick transfer, but so what made you decide to go for a GU patrol? Four point two. Uh, initially, I wasn't going to go for a four point two. Um, what were you looking at? A three liter due to price, and I'm very very happy that I've forked out the extra dollars back in the day to buy the four point two because, as a lot of people know, the hand grenade, the three liter, um, a lot of issues with them and. People don't seem to have them for that long. Mm. So it was probably another third of a third on top of the price that I was looking to spend. So it was a huge outlay for, well, I wasn't by any means financially yeah. well off. So it was a big, a big outlay, but it's probably paid off in the long run. How long have you had it for? Uh, probably 14 again. Actually, no, it wouldn't be 13. It would be 11, 11, 11 years, 11 years. That's still a while. So you know this car pretty well then. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been super reliable. Um, mm. I think the only real concern it wasn't an issue, but it was a concern. Uh, 2016 had a rear main seal, which then sort of a little bit known just to be a bit weepy. Um, yeah, that was on a Cape York trip. Um, rear main seal was leaking a bit more than I would have liked, and it was yeah, it still did another. 4,000 Ks on it when I noticed it was weeping, just top the top the oil up and whatever. Best part about a GU 4.2? Uh, reliability. Worst, pa worst part? I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling to find a the worst part. Well, that's a good thing for you. you what, what do you think the worst part is on a 4.2? Patrol? No. <laughs> the badge. <laughs> the badge. No, um, look, it's, it's been a good truck. Yeah, I just generally ask those questions because... Um, you can sort of then tell if someone has had a few, or yeah. if there's something that's bugging them about it. Yeah. It's like if you oh. ask someone with an FJ, it always say space. space hubs, hubs would be a patrol issue. Okay. Um, I had a really good run on, on hubs, but then of late I've been, and still running um, crappy cheap hubs, but uh, they are a weak point in, in the patrol drive line. So yeah, that'd probably be my. It's probably not a bad spot to have your weakest link though. Exactly. If you want something to go, axle. <laughs> you'll undo eight bolts and you can swap it out. So mm. hence and the reason I carry two. Carry. Yeah. Have you considered changing these auto hubs to manual? Yes, blocking? I have. Um, only recently it's become an issue. 
had a bit of an incident in the high country on a, a pretty gnarly track. Um, I was, f it was in front convoy, in the front of the convoy with three or two other cars behind us. Um, and I was basically facing straight towards where you don't want to be facing. It had no reverse due to, well, I had no traction to get reverse due to my hubs being, I was in two wheel drive up a pretty steep hill and I had to be winch blocked back to make the corner a big hairpin mm. purely based on crappy hubs um, so that was it got a bit hairy but I mean you know it makes you think about other like a pretty intricate sort of recovery which is good so yeah so it's glad you have people behind you yeah definitely <clears throat> if uh, everyone was in front of me it would have been a completely different story you know you'd be setting up multiple winch blocks trying to pull yourself back just a couple meters to make the hairpin yeah okay what are the top three favourite mods on your GU? Uh, it's one thing we didn't touch on was the long arm kit in the rear. Okay. Just transform that that the droop in the suspension. Um, standard from standard arms, the long arm kit, the long arms are an extra probably three hundred mil. Wow. Um, That's a fair. It effect. is a it is a weld on bracket, mm. but Superior made it basically look factory. Which like it's, it literally sits on there nice. There's no modifications. It sits up tidy, welded all on, and just the, the articulation in the back end from that is just crazy. And the other two, intercooler exhaust is a big one. Both as a bit of a duo, um, sort of go hand in hand. Um, instant power and recent, recent, relatively cheap as far as the cost goes. Um, third one or sort of coupled with the second one would be uh, fuel pump beefing that up to a bigger plunger um, once again it's yeah it's a little bit more expensive to do but it's a uh, pretty good reliable power and these old 4.2s sort of need a bit of a up and up and go but tell our audience where we can find you and mark on your channel and what it is you guys get up to uh, Sidetracked Australia is our YouTube channel and Instagram page. Um, we probably focus a little bit more on our YouTube channel, but um, they obviously work hand in hand, as you're well aware. Mm -hmm. um, we just enjoy the country we live in and basically vlog and, and film our trips that we do. Mm. We try and obviously love doing some good wheeling and, um, and just seeing some good countryside, which we are incredibly fortunate to have at our doorstep. Yeah. So what is your favourite trip that you've you've filmed? Tasmania. And you've edited and you've released? Tasmania by far. Tassie one. Yeah. How many episodes? There was seven. Seven episodes in that. Um, just the diversity in Tassie is ridiculous. We can be driving through countryside like we've got here with gum trees. Um, and then literally 50 k's down the road, you're in a dense rainforest. Um, and then you can, yeah, drive another 50 k's and you're driving on sandy cape beaches literally driving down crossing freshwater streams on the coast it's uh and the full driving is second to none yeah you know a lot of people it. focus a lot of people focus on the, the north of australia but mm. um and obviously from south australia tassie's an eight hour drive jump on a boat go to sleep wake up there that's not bad it's good long drive for me yeah <laughs> but no tassie was great fun uh, every trip's great fun, but yeah, Tassie was yeah. Yeah, it's a good, a good what trip. What was your highlight trip so far, pretty much? Yeah, Tassie. I reckon. Okay. Very good, man. Well, thanks for bringing the, the stealthy looking GU in. All good. I reckon if we line up the three trucks that are here next to each other, going to look pretty mint. Be a good shot. Yeah, it will be a good Bloody shot. Oath. We'll have to do that. We will. <laughs> so if you want to see more, head over to Sidetracked. There'll be a subscribe button there for Sidetracked. And of course, for my own channel, if you haven't already, but uh, thanks again for coming on. Thank you. People will be stoked with another GU. 4.2 as well. Been a while. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, mate. Nice.